Hello, uh, welcome to this course on dynamics of classical and quantum fields. My name is Giri Sedlur and I will be teaching this 12 week course uh, on this interesting topic and I hope to see you for all these lectures. So, the main reason for uh, floating this course was that uh, the uh, topic of uh, quantum fields and classical fields are in many uh, many cases not discussed properly in uh, the syllabi of various uh, uh, MSc programs. Uh, and also there is a huge gap between the uh, syllabi of uh, MSc courses and the research literature that is uh, currently seen in theoretical physics. And uh, also I felt that uh, a course uh, which uh, bridges this gap will be very useful to students who want to specialize in theoretical physics. Okay, so, let me uh, tell you what a field is. So, in the context in which I am discussing it, a field is basically a dynamical system with uh, infinitely many degrees of freedom where the infinity is of the continuous kind. So, uh, you might be wondering that seems like a rather technical definition. So, let me explain uh, that to you with examples. So, for example, uh, you can have classical or quantum. So, that means the dynamical system can be uh, either obeying classical mechanics or it can obey quantum mechanics. So, if it obeys classical mechanics, the examples of classical fields are uh, for example, waves in an elastic medium, it could be electromagnetic waves or uh, density and velocity distributions in a fluid for example and so on and so forth. So, these are the typical examples of uh, classical fields that one encounters uh, in theoretical physics. So, as far as quantum uh, fields are concerned, they, they are typically the quantum mechanical analogs of these classical examples that I gave you. So, for example, you can have uh, uh, sound waves. So, if you have sound waves in uh, a solid, you can actually uh, quantize the sound waves, you can study the sound waves quantum mechanically and then you will be describing phonons that means those are the quantum mechanical analogs of sound waves. So, similarly, uh, you can study the quantum mechanical analog of electromagnetic waves and basically you get a description in terms of what are called photons which are the quanta of uh, electromagnetic radiation. So, that is not the only way in which you can study the quantum fields that means it is not as if uh, quantum fields are simply always the uh, quantum mechanic and analog of a classical field. So, that means there should be a classical field to begin with uh, and then you have to then quantize it and get uh, a quantum mechanical uh, uh, counterpart. So, actually you can have something intrinsically quantum mechanical which has no uh, classical analog and that is the example for Fermi field. So, so you have something called matter fields in uh, quantum field theory which have no classical counterpart. So, the idea there is that uh, you have something which is a, a intrinsically a, a field to begin with which does not have a quantum uh, classical counterpart and when you quantize that you get uh, excitations which uh, we identify with elementary particles like fermions or bosons. So, those would be the examples of quantum fields and typically those fields uh, are uh, relativistic in nature they obey special relativity and they are uh, so in most of the time when people speak of quantum fields uh, in the textbooks that you normally see, people actually uh, mean that they mean quantum fields that are consistent with special relativity. So, whereas in this particular course, I am going to take a less commonly uh, uh, followed viewpoint and that is that I will be uh, using not uh, relativistic uh, uh, ideas, but I am using non-relativistic physics to describe both classical as well as quantum fields. So, you will see that these types of uh, this type of viewpoint has uh, applications if you want to specialize in condensed matter physics and so on. So, that is the main purpose of this uh, series of lectures and this course is to train uh, students in theoretical physics who want to specialize in theoretical and also experimental physics 
but who want to more or less uh, have decided to go into condensed matter. So, I will not be spending too much time discussing relativistic field theory, so but I will be discussing quantum fields relevant to condensed matter physics, but at least 50 percent of this course uh, will definitely be useful also to students who want to specialize in particle physics later on because the basic ideas are very similar, it is just the details are different. So, I hope uh, you will join me for this course and uh, I hope you have listened to the or uh, seen the uh, various uh, uh, subtopics that I have listed on the website and uh, uh, so I hope to see you for the rest of the course. But before I leave you, I want to point out that I will be following a textbook uh, which I have authored which is published by CRC Press, it is called the uh, same as the title of this course that is Dynamics of Classical and Quantum Fields and Introduction. So, it is published by CRC Press in 2013. So, that is part of Taylor and Francis and uh, the author is uh, me that is Girish Settler. Uh, but now I have been told by the publisher that there is uh, also going to be a paperback Indian edition uh, as of uh, beginning of July 2022. So, um, and that is priced at a very nominal price and the uh, I, uh, ISBN number of that is uh, uh, given to me by the publisher as 9781032381503. So, I am displaying all that information uh, right now on the on your screen. So, I hope uh, you will be able to pick up a copy. Uh, as it is now at an uh, affordable Indian edition price and uh, you will be able to follow the lectures uh, that way. Okay, thank you for listening to me, hope to see you for the rest of the course, thank you. Mm -hmm.